Brantford, originally from Toronto, but relocated to Brantford. And you are described on social media as like acoustic soul. Yes. But I don't think that definition really does you justice it's because your, your sound is so much bigger and more than that. So I'm always curious to hear from the artist directly, like how do you describe your music? Or what's your elevator pitch? Honestly, I, uh, I'm, uh, I'm the one that started calling that acoustic soul. I didn't know what to call it. Uh, I, I, I grab influences from all over the place, and uh, so and it's, and we don't we talk about this all the time. My girlfriend and I, in terms of when we're applying for festivals, we're applying for like a lot of folk festivals, and but at the same time we're like not really folk, but we are. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. And it's just it's 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 uh, yeah, it's kind of. Um, come to the conclusion I'm kind of the odd man out in a lot of ways, but I, I love it. Uh, I embrace it and just want, want Black Sea Devil to be just um, a platform for for music that I love, A, love to hear and love to play and, and want to continue continually put it through that like that platform and, and grow and morph into whatever it may be. Yeah, yeah well genres are so ambiguous these days anyway, yeah. like yeah. it's hard to, to say that you're just one thing. And folk, I mean, you could have a whole hour conversation of like, what is folk now anyway? Because yeah, what is considered folk, it's more almost like pop music. Yeah, and it's yeah. not the traditional folk that, you know, from, like, you know, the true folk from yesterday. you go three days and uh, what have you. Yeah, yeah. 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 And I do get the acoustic soul um, compare, or description, I guess, because your debut that came out in 2017, uh, The Freedom Sessions, yeah. is very much like singer, songwriter, acoustic. But there's also. I mean, I've listened to this album quite a bit, and it starts with like almost a, a, like a Latin guitar vibe with some keys, and then some you know strings mixed into it. Yes. Uh, where where does that come from? Uh, all sorts of all sorts of places, you know. Like like I I, I would I remember being a kid in, in in the car and my dad cranking Gypsy Kings, right? So I'm like all these influences are constantly around me. And, and you know, you pick up on little bits and pieces of it and just kind of incorporate it and it becomes part of you, right? And and then you incorporate it in the music and it. so I just naturally let it let it come out. Whatever wherever the song may lead. If if if, if I'm writing a, a blues tune today, it's a blues tune. If it's a country tune, it's a country tune. And and I'm not afraid to mix the genres within within the actual song as well. And, and take the listeners on a little bit of a a little bit of a trip, a little bit of a journey, I guess. And that is your debut, though, correct? That is my debut. We I released um, uh, an EP prior. Uh, I had I, I was in the process of recording the album, and then got an opportunity to open up for Jeff Martin. Oh wow! And, yeah, it was a, it was a great opportunity, and I didn't want to go to the show with nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, so at that point, I had the guitar tracks and and the vocal tracks already recorded. So I quickly, uh, we mixed and mastered five tracks. And so I released a very limited edition EP that uh, I think 300 copies are floating around, all numbered. So yeah, hopefully, maybe one day there'll be some So if you have one, hang on to it. Yeah, it might be a collector's item. <laughs> yeah. But it just feels like, or it sounds like you've been doing this for <coughs> such a long time. So I, I thought maybe like you had some projects or something before this? I, I have. I, I've been doing it since I was about 13 years old. Um, uh, jumping from band to band. Uh, the recording aspect of it, it came later on. Um, my first... My first EP was with a band called First Person Shooter out of Toronto. We recorded uh, a two-song kind of EP single, whatever you want to call it. Um, then uh, my first real project was with uh, the Blues Emergency, uh, a band that I was fronting uh, prior to the Black Sea Devil project, and it was a very psychedelic blues kind of um, classic rock mix. And we managed to put out a debut record, uh, which was recorded prior to my album, but my album actually came out first due to due to band issues and what yeah. have you but we we met uh, we managed to get it out and we're quite proud of the records uh, it's uh, it's available on CD and, and, and digital platforms as well but uh, yeah uh, as of now I guess it's the two records plus the new one that's coming out so why did you decide to go the solo route um, for many years of, uh, of playing with various I guess people and, and just Having a tough time finding individuals that, that really wanted to push this forward. Like I knew deep down in my heart that this is what I got to do for the rest of my life, and I just needed to get myself to that path. And, and I was getting to a point where I just needed to a believe in myself 
um, I, I would I would shy away and kind of hide behind a, a band kind of formation where but I was always like the primary songwriter for the most part in the bands that I was in or one of the, the like co-songwriters or what have you and I just uh, yeah it was time to, to embrace my ability and and kind of not shy away from it and, and just move on forward and yeah, and then the band previous, the Blues Emergency, didn't have the greatest uh, outcome in the end. That it just kind of gave me that extra kick to to want to do it myself and kind of take my career into my own hands. And and now now I'm kind of going the opposite route and and and, and bringing in people into the fold, into Black Sea Devil. That's now five years strong and and just uh, build it from there with the right people. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. So you mentioned a new album. Mm -hmm. You did like just drop a new single yes. um, called A Matter of Time. And I find that this deviates a little bit from your previous it sound. Does, yeah. It's a, like the, the it's, uh, incredible horns, I guess. And it's very um, more bluesy, but it really shows off your raspy voice too. Yeah, yeah. So is this a, like a conscious decision to move from the singer-songwriter to this more different sound it was it was it was uh, kind of me saying sitting down saying you know what I am not gonna like the first album I tried to go the folk route as much as possible but it's just I miss playing like I, I played in heavy metal bands my whole life I played oh, no in rock way. bands blues okay. bands yeah and, and I miss that stuff I, I, and I don't want to just be doing the folk so I'm, I'm just gonna let it just go wherever it goes right and then write whatever and uh, a matter of time, I, I had been listening to, uh, getting really into Tom Waits' catalog, and, and that definitely rubbed off on I me. was going to mention that, actually, yeah, is getting like a Tom Waits kind of vibe. Yeah, and he's got like very unique recording like from track to track and album to album, so I'm like, you know what, let me try something different, and I envisioned these horns, and got some great players out of Toronto to come in, um, um, Max, Max, Max Forrester and uh, Sarah Fazakerly, uh, yeah, and it just... Uh, told them what I was hearing more or less and just gave them an open kind of platform to do their thing and, and then we just molded it from there. And That's and a lot of trust. Out. Yeah, you know, it is, but you, you gotta, you gotta, you know, first just have an ear for the musician and know that they're, you know, uh, when I when I see someone that I like, I'm like, yeah, I'd love to get them on record, but I also don't want to be like some dictator that's, you know, I tell them more or less, like, you know, I'm envisioning something here and here, but, and then just let them do their thing. and then. I'm listening closely and playing producer, and then when I hear something, I'm like, oh, maybe, you know, loop that two times, do this, do that, and, and yeah, we get it done that way, and it's been an effective uh, approach to the recording process. So the single is up on all digital platforms, oh, yeah, so yeah. everyone can go and listen and check it out. Is the rest of the album kind of kind of have that vibe to it? It's it, it varies from track to track. It's really all over the board. Uh, you're gonna get some classic rock. You're gonna get uh, you're gonna get some folky stuff. You're gonna get some bluesy stuff. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's all different. And then there's some stripped down folk ballads, like right down to guitar and just a vocal uh, and a harmonica. So just really changing it up, but there's something for everyone on this record. But uh, I'm hoping that you know I get an audience that um, like myself who listens to a, a ton of music and embraces a, a ton of music and kind of fall into that category of just pure music lovers and and, and that will like gravitate to anything that's honest, I guess. So the reason that you are in town, though, is because of Living Roots Festival. Yeah. This is year number four. Have yes. you performed at all of them? Uh, no. Most of them? Uh, last year was the first one. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, but I was in town for the first time in in, uh, in New Brunswick the year pre previous to that. And when I was booking my tour, uh, everyone's like, you got to reach out to this guy, Eddie Young. Eddie Young. Eddie, it came up like three or four times, different restaurants, different promoters. And I'm like, all right, I got to locate this Eddie Young guy. And, uh, Sure enough, got in touch with him, and he got me a few gigs at the, the Grim Ross Brewery on my first tour down here, and uh, we hit it off. And as you know, most people do with with Eddie, he's just great, great guy, and just you know, uh, doing it for the right reasons, and then yeah. just like, yeah, I, uh, yeah, the world needs more Eddie Young. The world needs more Eddie Young, yeah. for sure. And uh, he invited me out to um, to the uh, to his festival. He's like, you got to come back, and so here we are. And uh, I didn't have a tour plan. I wasn't going to come out. But uh, we had the week open, and it got closer and closer to the date, and we're like, you know, let's reach out to Eddie. I'm like, hey, wait, I'll drive in just for the festival. Let's do this. And so, yeah, it worked out great. And, yeah. 
happy to be here. Because I was going to ask, like, what keeps bringing you back to it's the New Brunswick? Vibe. Like, we, we, we have a, my girlfriend and I, we were, we're like smiling all weekend. And then, like, you feel it amongst the musicians, uh, just just good vibes and, and just a community and, and people who love music and, and love doing music and, and, and just, yeah, you just, it's just like an army of, of music lovers here. And, uh, yeah, we, uh, we love it. And we love, um, we we've been talking about it ever since the last one, and uh, yeah, I, I uh, honestly I think I'll be back as long as Eddie has the festival. Uh, I'll be here as long as uh, he has a spot for me. Yeah, it's uh, even just like just last night, just uh, hanging out with everyone and just talking music, talking business, and everyone's just in a happy mood. And mm -hmm. It's really cool. Do you find that's like an East Coast thing, or do you find that is you know every little scene or area has their it depends. Their vibe? I, I find like being from Toronto, it's got a bit of that big city mentality. So uh, it takes it's a lot harder to like get people to kind of loosen up and, and be themselves. It's a little bit of a, a front sometimes you kind of feel. Whereas out here, especially like northern New Brunswick, who's been one of my favorite places to play, like play Petit Rocher little small town out in the middle of nowhere and uh, yeah just like the reception and, and the love you feel the minute you walk in it's it's unreal uh, and I love playing the smaller towns and I just find uh, I don't know if people are more appreciative or just not I guess there's so much going on in big cities that it's mm -hmm. hard to like stop and smell the roses sometimes right and just like embrace the, the you know the, everything that's going on, right? Because they're so oversaturated with this stuff. So yeah, coming to I guess a smaller city in you know, Fredericton, like you really feel the more of a community, definitely. Yeah. So I hate asking the cliche questions, but I'm it's okay. I'm very <laughs> curious though about Black Suit Devil. Like, yeah, where does yeah. that name come from? The name is uh, I'm very like uh, I, like a lot of my lyrics are socially conscious and what have you, and, and they touch upon inequality and what have you, and. Uh, it's a representation of, of the corporate elite. A lot of times it's these men in black suits and ties that uh, kind of, yeah, orchestrate things around the world and what have you. And I'm trying to sing against a lot of the, the corporate injustice, the corporate greed, and just peace and unity. And, and there was a, a former kind of boss of mine where I used to nickname him Black Suit Devil. And he kind of represented that for me. Uh, but anyway, I just joke, I used to always joke that, oh, that would be a cool band name one day. And it was supposed to be the band name for the Blues Emergency, but then uh, that didn't pan out. We, we picked the Blues Emergency, and so I just like, you know, one day when I do my soul thing, you know, I will be on the Black Suit Devil. I, just, I find a lot of times with the soul thing, if you just use your name, you can kind of get lost in a sea of, mm -hmm. of a singer-songwriter. So I wanted to kind of take that the Dallas Green approach, the, the City and Color approach, and kind of put something. Plus, I knew I always wanted to build it into a band as well, so, uh, yeah, I did, didn't want it to be the Andy DiRego show kind of, right, so, yeah. So we're currently at the very end of May, so what's coming up next for Black Suit Devil after this? I got, uh, finishing up the, the recordings, uh, so I got uh, four songs submitted in for mixing. Uh, I got lucky enough to have Dan Hosh out of Hamilton, who's worked actually with City and Color and the Arkells, Glorious Sons, who's mixing the record. And so finishing up those tracks, I'm um, just at the stage of doing backup vocals and just kind of fine tuning things, making sure every track is right. When I did my first record, I was kind of recording at a studio and always watching the clock and balancing home life with the costs of recording. So I, you know, as, I mean, I'm sure every musician would say this, that, that they wish they could go back and change certain things on the record, but I don't want to have any kind of like regrets on this one. I want to be like do the best product that I can do, and having my own studio now and, and doing my own recordings has allowed me to do that and just really fine tune everything. And so yeah, yeah, working hard on that and a bunch of gigs, um, local ish gigs about like two hours away from home. Kind of, uh, I play generally about like three to four times a week. So like uh, That's a keep lot. keep it yeah 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 keep busy at it. Yeah, so I'm just gigging and uh, yeah. So where can we keep up to date on Black Suit Devil? Where can we go online to check out your music uh, and tours and stuff? Various places, uh, blacksuitdevil.com. Um, you can sign up for the mailing list on there. That's uh, we don't uh, don't spam emails. Send like one a month just to keep people posted for upcoming happenings and keep them in the loop. 
uh, Facebook, uh, Spotify, all, all the social media and streaming sites. Uh, uh, Bands in Town is another one uh, that people can follow. Yeah, YouTube, you name it. And we try to try to post the dates everywhere. So my last question for yeah. you is always the most important to me. Okay. What are you listening to right now? What are you digging? Uh, Israel Nash out of uh, out of the U.S. He is uh, for fans of Neil Young. I'd say really. Go out and, and seek his catalog. Uh, fantastic, fantastic uh, singer songwriter, and uh, another guy is Jonathan Wilson, also out of the U.S. He's um, he's one of those guys that kind of do it all himself. Uh, really great producer, but great songwriter as well. And actually, he has a Neil Young connection as well. He was one, of, I think, the keyboard player for Neil's last tour when they rolled into Toronto. Uh, he he's incredible, and Marcus King Band. Another uh, another young uh, guitar player that uh, really kind of gets. I, I gravitate. I love like bands like the Allman Brothers and stuff, like the classic stuff. So any band that's kind of doing that thing really catches my ear. But but I mean I listen to everything from metal, jazz, blues. So it keeps changing. But You'll have to come back sometime for the Harvest Jazz and Blues Festival. Actually, I just got an invite last night for that, so I will oh, be. Okay. Will, I'll probably be back here in September. Or I will be. Yeah. It's the best time to be in Fredericton. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm going to be with uh, doing something with Eddie. So yeah, that's uh, it's in the works. But okay. Uh, yeah. So I will Seekers be back. Seekers are exclusive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Perhaps I shouldn't have said that just yet. It's all set in stone, but yeah. Anyway, we're, uh, yeah, um, I'm looking to be back in September. Do a little mini run in, and hopefully I'll have um, at least the CD pressings of the new album out, as the the album comes out September 28th in Toronto. So perhaps I'll do a little exclusive East Coast run of uh, of the album prior to that. So. That's exciting. Yeah, yeah. So you're gonna do a performance. For us, yeah, yeah. what are we going to hear? Uh, do you wanna, how how do you want to set this up? I'll do um, I'll do Firefly. That's off the new record. It's going to be the next single that's coming out okay. in uh, hopefully early July. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. We'll do I guess the one tune. Uh, Perfect. Yeah. Well, thank you, Black Suit Devil, for uh, taking the time to come in and chat with us here because I know it's been a busy few days yeah, and some late nights and early mornings. So. Yeah, no, thank you, Aaron. Uh, like, I uh, love, uh, love coming in. You guys have always been a strong supporter of my music, and I appreciate that a lot. And yeah, happy to be here. Great. Thank you. Cool.